In the Bible, all numbers have symbolic meaning, but the most important ones are 3 and 7. 3 represents God himself because it represents the Trinity, and 7 represents perfection and holiness. What's interesting is that we see both of these numbers encoded many different ways in the first verse of the Bible. Genesis 1-1 is, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, or in the original Hebrew, Bereshit bara Elohim et et ha'aretz. Now the thing about the Hebrew alphabet is every letter is also a number. That's how the Hebrew people use numbers. They use letters. So you can add up the number values of every letter in a Hebrew word to get the number value for that word. And you can add up the number value for every word in a Hebrew sentence to get the number value of that sentence. So the number value for Genesis 1-1 is 2,701. Now, this number is 37 times 73. And these are both prime numbers, so that means there's no other way to factorize this number. Also, if you add 2701 to its mirror image, which is 1072, you get 3773. Also, the verse in Hebrew has seven words, and three of those words are nouns. And if you add up the number values of those nouns, you get 777, which is three sevens. And it's also equal to 37 times 3 times 7. The one verb in the verse has three letters, and its number value is divisible by seven. The entire verse has 28 letters, and 28 is divisible by 7. All the nouns together have 14 letters, and 14 is divisible by 7. Let's talk more about 37 and 73, the factors for the verse number. First of all, they are mirror images of each other, like we said, and the verse number plus its mirror image is 3773, which is also 7 times 7 times 77. Also, 73 is the 21st prime number, and 21 is 3 times 7, and 37 is the 12th prime number, and 12 is the mirror image of 21, and 12 plus 21 is 33. And just as 12 and 21 are mirror images, 12 squared and 21 squared are also mirror images. All this is why 73 is actually Sheldon's favorite number. Here's more evidence that 37 is a divine number. If you make a box of the positive digits, and you make a number with the first three digits and their mirror image, it's a multiple of 37. If you do the next three digits and their mirror image, it's a multiple of 37. If you do the third row, it's also a multiple of 37. If you take the first column and its mirror image, it's a multiple of 37. Same with the second column and the third column. What about the rows in the opposite direction? Still multiples of 37. What about the columns in the opposite direction? Still multiples of 37. What about the diagonals? Same thing. Alright, enough threes and sevens. So the Old Testament of the Bible is written in Hebrew, and Hebrew letters are also used as numbers. The New Testament of the Bible is written in Greek, and Greek letters are also used as numbers. Jesus unites the Old and New Testaments according to the Bible. He is the main character of both. The Hebrew name for Jesus is Yeshua HaMashiach, and the number value for that is 754. The Greek name for Jesus is Jesus Christos, and the number value for that is 2368. Now, if you divide his Greek name value by his Hebrew name value, you get a number that is a closer approximation of pi than 22 over 7, which is the standard fractional approximation of pi. There's also a lot of coincidences with the chapters of the Bible. There's 1,189 of them, at least in Protestant Bibles. Psalm 117 is the middle chapter of the Bible, and it also happens to be the shortest chapter of the Bible, out of all 1189 chapters. The number of chapters in the Bible, plus its mirror image, is 11,000, a nice round number. 11,000 also happens to be the sum of 37 squared and its mirror image. Now let's talk about the Isaiah Bible coincidences. Isaiah is a book of the Bible with 66 chapters, and the Bible, at least the Protestant Bible, has 66 books. Isaiah is generally broken up into chapters 1 to 39 and chapters 40 to 66, with the first chapters focusing on judgment and the last chapters focusing on hope. Just like the Bible is broken up into books 1 to 39, called the Old Testament, and books 40 to 66, called the New Testament, with the Old Testament focusing on the law and the New Testament focusing on the Gospel. And there are many more parallels between the chapters of Isaiah and the books of the Bible. The first chapter of Isaiah says, Hear me, you heavens, listen, earth, for the Lord has spoken. And the first book of the Bible begins with the Lord speaking the heavens and the earth into existence. The 40th chapter of Isaiah prophesies, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord. And in the 40th book of the Bible, that prophecy is quoted and fulfilled in John the Baptist. The last chapter of Isaiah talks about God making the new heavens and the new earth. And the last book of the Bible, Revelation, is also about how God is going to make the new heavens and the new earth.
And it's worth noting that Isaiah isn't just any book of the Bible, it has the most explicit prediction of Jesus in the entire Old Testament. And there are so many more number patterns in the Bible, so if you want to learn more, you can go to this website, which is where I learned a lot of the ones for this video. The link is in the description. So these Bible coincidences are very interesting, and they help assure us that God was involved in the writing, assembling, and transmitting of the scriptures. But ultimately, they're not why we believe the Bible, nor do they have any secret code we're supposed to find. We believe the Bible because it is the unfolding of the message about Jesus Christ, who is God and he died for people's sins to save them from their fate.